much. Um, good morning, everybody. You're all very welcome. Um, it's great to see or see that that so many of you have have tuned in uh, this morning. Um, so as Margaret says, my name is Emer Sheeran, and I'm the mature student officer. I'm based in the Maynooth uh, Access Program um, in Maynooth University, and in the Access Program, um, Maynooth Access Program Map, we're called. And um, we look after um, students coming through the various alternative routes into a university. So people coming through the mature student entry route the Disability Access Route to Education, the HERE Route, HEA, or the Higher Education Access Route, and people coming in through the Further Education Route with their QQI uh, qualifications. So we both encourage um, people to, to, to um, come to Maynooth, and then we provide supports for them when they're here. Um, some of you here today may have made your application for this year, you're in the system, you're, you're going through um, the selection processes that we use and then other people might have uh, apply uh, might be thinking of applying in in future years maybe for entry 2022 so I'm trying to I'm kind of covering both sides how, how you go about applying what we're looking for um, and how we select mature students and I'll also talk about the support so so um, we'll, we'll get all that done in in just uh, 20 minutes or so. Uh, and as Margaret says, you can um, pop in questions in the, the, uh, the Q&A uh, part there on Zoom, and we will try and answer as much of those as, as possible. Um, my email is there on that screen at the, the bottom left, um, so if you uh, want to, to send me an email uh, directly at any stage, that's, that's fine. I, I look forward to hearing from you. Okay, so just a little bit about what I'm talking about. I'm going to talk about um, mature students and their, their value um, to Maynooth. Um, I'm going to, and their motivations for getting here, I'll talk a little bit about the application and selection process. I'm really talking about the full-time uh, degree courses. I think we may have a session on the part-time um, uh, courses on offer in the university uh, today. It's certainly be one of the, 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 the pre-recorded presentations that you'll find when you, when you go onto the link for this open day. So I'll talk about how you apply, how we select mature students and what to expect at the interview and the entrance uh, tests that we use. Um, I'll talk about some of the preparatory courses that we have on offer for people who've been out of education for some time. Um, and I'll just give a brief outline of the unique supports that we offer both potential and registered mature students. So people before they come for, for students before they come to college, when they're just thinking about it and the supports after they've uh, become a registered student. And I'll put up my contact details at the end as well um, and encourage people to, to contact us. So I suppose um, in relation to mature students, Maynooth, Maynooth is one of the most diverse uh, student groups in uh, the, the country and the university attracts people from all backgrounds. So it is a, a very um, diverse and vibrant, there is a very diverse and vibrant mature student uh, population. Um, it also sees itself, and I think generally in, in, in the country that pe people see Maynooth as the lead institution in terms of supporting uh, mature students and very much contributes to the increased participation of mature students generally within higher education. We also have one of the oldest adult learning uh, uh, departments um, in the country and, and that is this really strong philosophy um, of learning that, that values um, the role that, that mature students have in, in shaping the university. We are uh, very motivated. We find that the students, the lecturers tell us all the time that the mature students particular, particularly are extremely motivated and very, very committed to their studies. Um, and I think um, mature students tend to bring, you know, they're coming from all different backgrounds. They may have raised a family or worked for years or um, done some traveling um, and they, they, they're, they're, they're bringing those kind of life experiences um, with them into the lectures and the seminars and tutorials um, and really enriching uh, those for, for, for the class generally and for the lectures and the tutors and that, this is what the tutors tell us all the time. And mature students as well tend to do very well academically. We've recently um, uh, conducted a little piece of research on, on how mature students do and they we found that they were overly represented in the higher um, grades at the end of their, their year, the, the two ones and the, the first um, as, as grades that they got at the end of their degree programmes. 
Uh, we, um, in Maynooth, we places are reserved on every single degree program for mature applicants. Um, we have a very strong set of uh, supports specifically for mature students. Currently, there are about 600 mature students studying with us across all um, the full-time degree programs. Um, as I say, mature students do very, very well academically. And mature students also participate in all aspects of college life. They're, they're members of the Mature Student Society. They work as ambassadors for many of our events, our, our open days, our um, you know, shadowing programs and other celebratory events in, in, in the university. Um, many of the mature students um, study abroad as part of their degree course, take, take a year or a semester to, to study in, in a university um, outside of Ireland. And many uh, mature students are also involved in work experience as part of their degree programme. Um, and also many of our mature students go on to further study or employment follow, following their degree course. We recently asked and um, did a little survey on our mature students on, on, on their reasons for going to college. And I think um, this might resonate, some of these might resonate with some of the people here today. Um, so many tell us that they just didn't have the opportunity to continue education when they were younger. They might have had to um, go out and uh, find a job or contribute to the family uh, circum uh, financial um, circumstances and they, or they might have just um the family mightn't have had, had the money to, to help them go to college or um it just wasn't expected that they would go on to college other people um said they came back because they 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 felt they were in a dead-end job or just didn't like what <clears throat> sorry <clears throat> what they were doing and uh, wanted to change in career um and you know uh, maybe needed qualifications to improve their their job prospects and other people just kind of said that they 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 had a kind of passionate interest in something like his English or history or biology all their lives, and they wanted to study it on a, on a more um, formal manner. And then other people just found the opportunity presented itself to them, you know, that that, that their family have been reared and, and gone, um, or that they have um, retired in, in recent years and now want to, to go into um, full time study. So. Um, just in terms of the um, application process, so mature students, um, as I say, can apply for all of our, our programmes. Um, now, the, all of the, the degrees are represented here um, during this open day, so I'm not going to go into any detail here, but just to let you know that you can apply for any programme. We have two very broad based degrees, our Bachelor of Arts and our Bachelor of Science. There's loads of subjects to choose from. And then we have much more specialised uh, degree courses in, in various areas, business, economics, psychology, social science, media, community and youth work, law, computer science, education, electronic engineering and various specialised science degrees. So as I say, the, 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 there'll be um, presentations, recorded presentations on all of these uh, throughout the open day. And there's also um, scheduled talks on the degrees, I think at 11 o'clock. Um, okay, so um, mature students can apply through the CAO by the 1st of February. Um, uh, they must apply to the CAO by the 1st of February. Um, they uh, can do this online. It's, it's the easiest way to do it. You can do it on paper as well. We do have late applications for some courses. So even now, um, if people are th haven't made an application yet, um, some of our courses are still, um, uh, it's still possible to apply, such as the Bachelor of Arts degree, but that's only up until the 1st of May. Um, so you can go onto our um, website and you'll see which courses are still open for application. Uh, many of our courses are closed at, at this stage. And um, it's very important, um, whether you're applying this year or in, in years to come, that you complete your CAO application thoroughly and make sure that you, you know, the, um, that you pay attention to providing uh, documentation, supported documentation, such as your exam, any exam results, anything that you're currently doing. Um, and personal statement is a, is a very important part of the CAO application. Any um, documentation that you want, to, you, you, that you're sending in support of your application has to be sent directly to the CAO. So um, in terms of selecting, there's different selection procedures depending on what degree you're applying for. So some of you might already be, as I said earlier, might be already in the process of, of going through one of these selection processes. So for some of these courses, just interview the BA um, and the product design, 
Um, and within that interview, um, you get the opportunity to tell us about your achievement um, and ask questions. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we, we use the interview to provide very tailored advice and guidance to each candidate, whether it's about um, their subject choice or about finance and funding, you know, some of the more practical aspects of going to college. Or, you know, if you, if you need to do some kind of preparatory course, we give you advice on, on what to do there as well. Um, in the other uh, selection process that we use here will be written assessment. So many of our more specialised degree courses would um, require the applicant to do a written assessment. So they've mostly taken place this year. Um, and after this, a short list is uh, compiled for interview. So that will be for our specialised degrees and all of our science degrees. And these are not, these tests are not an aptitude test. And um, they're, they're generally, you know, um, want to find out what your, what your particular interest in that degree that you're applying for it, um, is and uh, you know what, why, why, you're, why you're choosing to study it. So they usually require a, an essay type answer. So it's not an aptitude test. Um, there's a, there is a mathematics test for um, as part of the written assessment for all of our science and our psychology courses. We have a mature student handbook um, and that uh, gives a lot of information about it a lot of the stuff I'm talking about today, but it also details the selection process for every degree. Um, and you can email the access office or myself and request, and um, we can post you out one of those or the, the book is available online. Um, we, we, we have slightly different selection processes this year and last year, just because of COVID-19, we weren't able to meet as many people in, in person, but anybody that's in the, in the system this year has, is being communicated um, regularly to about the processes. If and when you are called for interview, um, for, the, for say for the, the BA, um, the, we, have, we have read your, your application form and your submitted documents and paid uh, close attention to your personal statement. So what we uh, concentrate then on is really your academic preparedness for entering into third level study. So your um, education to date, um, you might be currently doing some, some, some uh, studies, so we'd ask you about them and how you're, how you're getting on in them. Um, what kind of academic skills you've acquired over the years, essays, assignments, um, have you sat any exams? Mathematics, only if you're going into to maths-based uh, subjects. We, um, we will ask you about you know, what research you've done into the course that you're applying for. Have you thought about this? Do you, do you know what subjects are on offer? Um, have you attended or tuned into any open days and, and looked at our, our literature and online. Um, and we also cover in the interview just some of the more practical aspects of going to college. And just, just really to, we're not prying into people's personal um, or financial circumstances in, in talking about finance, but it's just to alert people that, you know, there's a cost to come to college and do you know how the grant works or the back to education loans and, and things like that. Um, so, and we, we offer um, people a chance to ask questions. So there's different outcomes. Um, you can be made an offer. We'll await uh, your results from your current study. Um, so many people are currently doing a course when they've applied to us. So we usually ask them to send on those results. And we'll tell you very clearly um, what kind of results we're looking for. Um, some cases we might recommend a one-week essay course or a maths course during the summer. These are free. Currently, they're, they, they, they're online this year because of COVID-19. Um, but generally, these are fantastic courses to help people um, make that final preparation. So we, we'll refer people, some people, to these courses where required. And then in other cases, um, we would recommend, if somebody's been out of education for a long time, um, we would recommend uh, some kind of preparatory course. Generally, what we're looking for from mature applicants is, as I say, evidence that you're prepared academically to take on a degree course so that you have completed education course in recent years and, um, you know, ha have, have a good set of results um, and have acquired the study skills, writing skills and, um, and looked into the, the research into the course. So I just want to talk about some of the foundation courses we have. Just very briefly, we have the Certificate in Return to Learning course prepares people for entry into the, the arts and social science programs. This is a level five on the qualifications framework. It's a part-time one-year course and it guarantees progression onto the first year of a BA um, if you get over 60% at the end of it. We have the Certificate in Science, which is level six. 
Um, so applications are still open for these preparatory courses and this prepares people for entry into science and engineering um, and also there's a there's a new component to that on, on computer science this is a full-time one-year course it's eligible for the back to education allowance and um, if you again if you get over 60 percent you're guaranteed into entry into the first year of some of the relevant degree courses and then we have the teaching foundation course so anybody interested in primary or second level teaching can, can think about this um uh, course uh, so this is a one-year full-time course and again it guarantees a uh, progression i'm conscious of the time so i'll just say a little bit about the support so we provide all of this um before pre-entry before you come to college all advice and guidance on on the application selection everything that i'm talking about now the courses the finance um the funding options and the supports um up, up until COVID, we, we, we offered a shadowing programme, so that'll be coming in again, hopefully next year, um, where we bring people in just to experience a, a, day, in, a day in the life of a, of a Maynooth University student. Um, we have our unique selection process, and Maynooth's processes that I've outlined already are, are very unique um, in, in the country, in that we, we put the emphasis on, on meeting the, meeting the, the, the applicants. Um, the, we have those academic skills courses I, I mentioned with the preparatory courses I mentioned, and then we have an orientation program. So people, will, once they've been offered and accepted a place, uh, just before they start uh, college, they, they'll be invited to, to a two day orientation program. And this will be, this will outline how to access the supports and you'll meet all the support staff, you'll meet all of the people in the access office who are, who will be there to support you throughout the year. And um, you'll meet the, 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 financial uh, budgeting advisor, um, the counselling service, the health service, all, 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 everything um, that, that's available to you as students of the university. Um, and also the lecturers and um, the, the, the um, many of the academic staff in, in the university. And then when you've become a registered student, we have dedicated student advisors. So within the access office, um, there are specific advisors you go to if you're mature student or you know if you uh, depending on what uh, particular route you've, you've come to the university through um, and these advisors will provide support on anything anything that's troubling a, a student so whether that is something of an academic nature something more personal or something specifically financial they can provide support um, and or refer you to 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 a more um, dedicated support office uh, we've academic advisors also these will be um specific uh, a lecture one of the lecturers in each department is giving the specific role of being the link with the access office so if you're having trouble with one of your subjects um we can you know we, we can refer you to the specific person in the department we have um supports around if anybody has any kind of um disability the support around technology this year for people who are starting in september 2021 um, we will be repeating what we did last year in, in, in COVID, um, where we, 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 we start the technology supports really in, at the end of July. So anybody getting those early round offers from the CAO will be contacted by the Access Office to, um, to be offered the opportunity to sign up for te technology support. Um, so kind of look out for that later on in the summer if you're in that um, group. Um, this student budgeting advice service provides advice on all things financial. So whether it's the SUSE grant, back to education loans, or you're just struggling day to day, um, the advice uh, service will provide, um, uh, will, will, give you, will give you help and also can refer you to some of our funds um, that, that we have in the university and I'll talk about them now. Um, and we also have some support centres around uh, write, essay writing and mathematics. So just the financial support, these are the, the, the more national supports, the SUSE grant, so that um, covers the €3,000, which is the, the student contribution fee. Um, so it's a, it's um, I'll, I'll give some maintenance as well. Um, so this is a means tested grant and it's means tested on the household income. Susie opened up for applications on the 22nd of April, just a few a couple of days ago. And um, so it's very important, even if you haven't gotten your place yet, but you think you know, you know you're hoping to come here this September, start the application process because it takes a while. It's a, it's a they're looking for a lot of information and a lot of um, documentation. So um, it's important to, 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 to get that process started. And um, the back to education loan. So if somebody's on some kind of um, social welfare payment, you might be entitled to back to education loan. So it's important to, to check that out. 
Um, we have bursaries um, that th these are closed for this year, the 1960 bursary, but the, 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 if people are starting in, in uh, this, this um, next year, there will be another one, another set of bursaries available. They're worth 5,000 a year. There's the university scholarship, and um, that's a specific phil philanthropic uh, scholarship for mature students that might be closed for this year. But again, if you're coming in a year's time, that, that, that will be open for applications again. Um, and then, you know, some Vince de Paul and some area based partnerships have have education funds for people going back into third level who are coming from disadvantaged backgrounds. And then after you come to college, we have the Student Assistance Fund and the Student Emergency Fund. And these are really designed to help people who are struggling financially in university. And we, we constantly write out, email students regularly to, uh, to make them aware of this fund and to, to avail of the fund um, through the Student Budgeting Advice Service. The fund, the Student Assistance Fund is open all the year round um, and people can come back to it according to their needs. Our Student Budgeting Advice Service provides information on all these funds and um, there'll be a, a, a pre-recorded presentation um, on that service as part of this open day. Um, that website there at the end, studentfinance.ie, is a very good source um, for all things financial. And finally, um, these are just uh, some of the, the events uh, throughout the, the, the year. So our next um, open day, which is similar to this one, will be on the 26th of June. Uh, so I just want to finally put up my contact um, details. So I'm emer.sheeran at mu.ie um, and that is the phone number. And or you can contact directly the access office is just access.office at mu.ie. OK, so Margaret, I'm going to finish up there. And I'll stop sharing. Margaret, you're on mute if you're talking. Okay, I have some text questions here, Emer, and we also had a few people had their hands up during the presentation, oh, okay. but I decided to let you go, but I will give them access to the mic now um, in a few minutes. But I'll ask you this one. The first one is from Susanna Walsh, and she says, are you referring to MSAP? In um, no, we we don't use that. That's the mature students admissions pathway, um, Susanna. So we don't use uh, the the MSAP here in in the in the university. I'm not sure if you're um, talking about the written assessments are are definitely not the, the MSAP. So that that's something that a lot of the other universities use, but we don't use it in Manu. Okay, and Claude Claude asks. I have to do an essay writing course, and if I pass, I secure my place. That's my understanding from the email. Is there any further course, or do I have to interview or anything else, or is it just the essay writing course? Um, Claude, uh, that's, yes, it, 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 it's just the essay writing course then that you have to pass. If that's what it said in the letter, you, you won't be, there won't be any further interviews or anything like that. And you'll be getting the more, more details on the essay course in the next few weeks. Okay. And Andrea asks, I was hoping to get some additional advice for the mature student interviews, as I have mine on Tuesday for the BSc in psychology, as well as what to expect with the uh, reasoning text. Okay, um, sorry, what was the name there, Andrea, was it, Andrea? Oh, um, so, uh, yeah, so the, 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 the psychology interviews are on this coming Tuesday, all right. They'll really be talking to you um, about your interest in psychology. Okay, that's, that's the most important thing for people going, that's a very specialized degree in psychology. So they, they want to know that people kind of understand a little bit, a little bit about what uh, studying psychology is about. So, uh, you know, I'd, I'd always recommend people to, to have a look at the website and, and look at what's kind of taught in Minute's psychology department. Um, the reasoning test, that's a mathematical test. I don't have an awful lot of details. I think it's kind of, there, there are multiple choice questions. I know that there might be about 10 or 12 of them and they will go from, I think, quite basic maths to, 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 to more advanced. That's all, that's all I can really tell you at the moment. Um, but um, yeah, that's, that's it. I hope, hope that answers your, your question. Okay, Andrea. Okay, if anybody wants to raise their hands now and I'll kind of 
um, I can allow you to talk if you want to ask a question. Give you access to the mic. mic. I think I might have another question. Um, oh, she, it's just Andrea saying thank you. Okay. Does anyone else have a question for Emer? You can raise your hand and I'll unmute your mic. No more questions. Sorry, there is another question done in there, um, Margaret, and I have to see okay. them now. I'm, so that's Leah. I'm wondering okay, yeah. about the interview dates and times to be given to mature to Bachelor of Education. Um, I, that's not something I know, I'm afraid, Leah. Um, I I know, it's, sorry, there's a Deirdre in admissions um, is organising those at the moment. I know that. Um, Margaret, you don't have any idea when those interviews I do, happening. but okay. I would say just put the question into the admissions box and uh, they'll answer it because um, if you go back onto the um, web page, they'll have, um, you know, that the, there's a, a Q&A for admissions and they'll answer it for you there. there. Yeah, I'd say it'll be coming up soon enough, Leah. Um, um, Paul, been... yeah, I can see that one there. Sorry, Margaret, couldn't have I've... brought you there. Yeah, I've been um, offered a part-time BA course. Would I be able to go full-time later? Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, you can. You there is a possibility to transfer. So if you, some people, yeah, they they might be able to um, do a year part-time. It depends on the subjects, though. Um, that would be something you'd need to talk to the admissions office about as well, uh, Paul. I'm, you know, it it. it you mightn't be able to just go automatically into second year because the same degree is not offered full time as the one part time, if you know what I mean. So, and it should depend on what part time um, degree. Sorry, did you say you're doing the part time BA? I think you said. Um, yeah, sorry, Paul. I I don't want to give you the wrong information. So really, I would talk to them in in admissions about. Yeah, that. Paul. And usually, it's a big question of transferring. So we have a designated area in. Um, in admissions where we deal with transfers and they look at what you've studied, they look at how it's related to um, the particular course that you're looking to transfer to and how many credits you've, you've, you've achieved to date. So there is a process there so you can um, check into that with admissions. Um, no, I don't know next. the answer to that. Um, Alan O'Shea, Margaret, would you know anything about the theology Alan, course? Uh, theology, Ruth Daly from the Pontifical is, is on today. There will be someone from the Pontifical University on answering questions at Open Day. So I would put that to them, um, Alan, if that's okay. But we teach philosophy in um, Maynooth University. And um, I'm not sure if it's the same one. I know theology students do take philosophy with us, um, but there's a talk on philosophy that you can just go on to the uh, open day page. You can click on the tile that says philosophy and it'll all be explained there. Great. Um, um, I'm going to talk, Nelson, about the QQI entry in a few minutes. So I'll just skip over that for now. Um, and I'll do the presentation and you can ask me questions, specific questions at the end. So we have Emma um, says, hi, Emma, regarding the essay writing course, what should I expect on completion of this? Would an interview follow? No, Emma. So no, once once you've got the essay, if you've been referred to the essay course, then you, all you have to do is, is sign up for the essay course and um, pass it and then you'll be given your place. Okay, and we have another question. When would you be notified if you got a place in the arts course? Okay, so <laughs> it depends. So if, if we're not looking for anything from you, either results from a current course or asking you to do the essay course or anything like that. So if, if you're, you will have been told the outcome of your BA application if you, if you made an application up until the 1st of um, February. So, so they've already been assessed. So you would have got some... Um, 
correspondence from an email from the admissions office telling you either you've got a place or referring you to the essay course or something like that. And um, if you made an application after the 1st of February, we won't be considering them until the from the 1st of May, we, we, you know, when we get the next lot of um, late applications from the CAO. But what we try and do for mature students is let people know as soon as possible that they're getting a place. Um, the official offer of a place comes through the CAO and the, the, the very first um, round of the CAO is around the fifth, the week beginning the 5th of um, July. And then there's other rounds even before the leaving cert comes out. So um, there isn't a straightforward answer to that. It just depends on where you are in terms of your application. You can, uh, you can send me in an email um, and, and I can look up your particular application. Um, if, if you like. Oh, okay. okay. Um, the next question, I'm not sure if you'll be able to answer it. I think really it should probably be directed to Susie. Um, Susie have, have already told me that I do not qualify as I have a postgrad cert. Can I apply for year two or year three? Susie's support. Yeah, I think the answer will probably be no, um, unfortunately, Sharon, because um, what, because you're you you've a higher level of education. So it sounds like you you have with your postgrad, you 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 might have a level nine um, qualification and doing a degree course if that's what you're doing uh, this coming year. Um, it's it's a level eight. So once you have already reached. Um, a higher level, they won't uh, support you. Um, our student budgeting advice service can give you more information on that, though, as well. Okay. Um, yeah, cool. So, I just, yeah, I just got uh, conscious of the time. Um, Margaret, we're on 25 okay. to um, 11. Paul says it's a BA in social and community studies. I'm not sure what that is. Oh, I think that's to do with the, the transfer, Paul. Yes. So, again, okay. just, yes. just take the oh, same. Yes, yeah. yeah. Okay, Desmond, would working full time be an issue if you were to study full time? It absolutely would, I think, Desmond, and I think Emer would agree with me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because people it have to work. We, yeah, people have to work. We, we're, we're aware of that. A lot of people have, have part time jobs, but full time, absolutely not, because the, the full time study, okay, you, you won't have lectures, you know, every hour of every day during the week but it'll be spread out over the week, you know, and um, they are full-time courses and you're expected to um, attend your lectures and, you know, you, you will have, you'll have to make a full-time commitment to the study. Part-time work is, is fine, but definitely we wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to work part, uh, full-time. Uh, um, Susanna, can you transfer from, from a full-time MH107 to a part-time course? The answer is no. Um, Susanna, you can't. It is a full-time course unless you can transfer in another college. Alan O'Shea says, thank you. Um, Aileen Sanders, can you stay on the BTA, BTEA after degree to do a master's or PhD? Uh, generally, I think the back to education lounge, I'm it might finish at, at the undergrad level, but you would need to check that with the local social welfare office or again, our student budgeting advisor will be able to tell you that. That's the type of thing she would know off the top of her head very quickly. So please do um, make contact there or, you know, your local social welfare office will be able to tell you. That okay, uh, Fanula came back um, with regards to um, an earlier question and the interviews for MH001 Mature start on Zoom on the 4th of May and it's organised through DCU. Oh, great. Okay. So that's the, the Bachelor of Education. So that's yeah. answering that question. From I'll just on. give you that quick message, last message, because we have to move on. I have done a degree course a few years ago in psychology, but just wondering if I could be able to do a post higher diploma in social studies. That shouldn't be a problem. You would just have to apply to the um, Department of Applied Social Studies. Um, you can pop that question into the admissions uh, box and they'll give you the information. Okay, thank you. And thank you, Emer. I'm just going to open my presentation now and share screen with you on, for the uh, QQI application process. Can you see that? Oh no, wait now. Yes, okay. 
Can you see that, Seymour? Yeah, Margaret, I can see that. Okay, okay perfect. Yeah. Okay, so this is going to be a whistle stop through the QQI application process. Um, my name is Margaret Madden. I work in admissions, as I said earlier. I'm a schools liaison officer. And I also work on developing the links between the QQI awards and the programmes in Maynooth. So um, I'm going to talk to you about um, QQI as a pathway to university. There are the three pathways um, for admission. There's the Leaving Certificate. Emer has spoken to you about the Mature Student Access Route, and I'm going to talk to you about another route, which is the QQI Level 5 or Level 6 route. Um, so basically, um, you'll be familiar with the framework of qualifications. I'm sure it's a framework to which all courses and learning achievements can be measured and related to each other. And usually, um, leaving cert when it's higher level can be is usually level five. You can do a PLC course, which is a QQI level five. You can also do a QQI level six or you can do an advanced certificate in um, an institute of technology, which is also at level six. A level seven is a past degree and level eight is an honours degree. And in Maynooth, all the um, uh, degrees that we offer at, are at level eight on the framework. So you can go from your leaving certificate straight to a level eight programme in a university or in an institute of technology, if you get the required points and satisfy the matriculation requirements. Or if all fails and it doesn't work out at the leaving certificate, you can apply to do a QQI, a PLC course, a QQI level five, and you can apply to university on the strength of that.